Hey everybody, Custom Mike's here with Fireball and John Scopeseth. <laughs> uh, I was just driving along minding my own business and we ended up here. Somehow. Yeah, somehow. Uh, this is Norwegian John. Uh, I'm Fireball. We're hanging out with Custom Mike's on the Custom Mike's page at the Peterson Museum Cars and Coffee. Absolutely. Uh, there's, Fabulous day. It's, it's uh, amazing that we're kind of back because this was down for a long time. Mm -hmm. And they've done a great job at bringing back, although limited amount of people. Limited, right. Everybody has to keep uh, one car width uh, apart and, you know, social distancing precautions. But... We're, we're not six feet. We're about six inches right now. We're risking it. <laughs> well, you got a mask, I got a mask. <laughs> That's right. So no, that works. No personal droplets at the moment. But uh, we do have amazing cars. We're going to walk through and show uh, pretty much every one of them. You're looking for Pontiacs. That's, that's kind of my... My thing, yeah. 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 So I don't know anything about Pontiacs uh, too much other than they're beautiful. But uh, when we get to one, you just point it out and you can run with it. <laughs> I'm good at taking them apart, but I need Mike to help me put them back together. <laughs> so, I do that well. <laughs> behind us, we have a 66 Mustang that's uh, really a great spot for this car because it's uh, the background fits perfect with the, uh, the red and silver. A beautiful 66, uh, just gorgeous Shelby wheels. Look at that. Just amazing. Uh, hopefully some of the, the drivers will be around with us today to be able to talk about uh, some of their builds and, and uh, some of the trials and tribulations that they've gone through. Yeah, there's a beautiful paint job on this car. Yeah, one thing you, you can't necessarily appreciate when you're shooting live is, uh, is the paint, but if you, if you look down the side of the cars and you see no warbles at all, and there is nothing going on but glass on the side of this car, it's just stunning. Really beautiful. It's unbelievably straight. You know. Yeah, the, the just hood like that and everything. <laughs> yeah, it's just stunning. I mean, look, that's just creamy right there. Look at that reflection of that metallic silver. Just beautifully done. Beautifully. Uh, we got a nice bike over here. This could look, this might be uh, Mark Rossetti's. It is. Uh, this is Mark Rossetti's bike. He's around here walking around. We're going to find him. He's got several of these, rides them all over town. Although I don't know how he gets groceries or anything like that. <laughs> Just one stop. Yeah, but he's usually, you know, riding around, go, goes to the shows in Malibu and, and up to our museum up in uh, Oxnard. Yeah, it just, it's a beauty. Some people learn to two-wheel demons, and uh, how about you? Are you uh, strictly a four-wheel guy? Uh, I'm a four-wheel guy. Yeah. I'm not allowed to break that, that rule. I'm not allowed to, to ride on anything with two wheels other than like a Schwinn. Yeah, that's probably about as much as I would yeah, do. Yeah, I'd, well. I'd, I'd get in deep trouble if I. I just didn't crash them and then I fix myself and then I get on a new one. You know? <laughs> right. Uh, nice Austin Healy. Not sure what year this is, but it's uh, it's a beauty. It's really quite uh, amazing what people do. Uh, there's a, a friend of mine that brought in a Bugatti over here. It's a, a replica, but he was going to buy it in Illinois and then he found another one. Um, local in Northridge uh, from a, an owner that was 94 and then uh, the guy said I'm not gonna drive it anymore so you can have it I wish I knew somebody like that yeah you got to keep going <laughs> here's a little bug eye you guys know this car another Austin this is the what Austin were they section thinking when they designed this thing you know I think you know I, I think they they probably designed the car and then they forgot the headlights <laughs> I'm not sure. I know in uh, England, in England, they call this a frog eye. Yeah. In America, oh. we call it a bug eye. Yeah. So it's uh, it's an amphibian type of thing. But I'm pretty sure that they they designed it and uh, they say, "Oh, we're going to have it as a track car. We're going to drive the heck out of it during yeah. the day." But what if we have to go and grab our wife at night or something? Well, there's one seat extra. Yeah. Right. There's one seat extra, and then they stuck some lights on there. And the other one goes in front. Yeah. They don't have a trunk. You you <laughs> have an affinity for this olds. This 98, tell me about this. Okay, this is a 57 Olds uh, 98 four-door hardtop. This um, actually, my when I was a kid growing up, the people across the street from us uh, had a car, this exact paint and everything. And they used to call it the Pink Bear. Um, and this, he, let's see, the guy that had it uh, actually worked for GM. I uh, actually worked for GM, 
and uh, he kept this for several years I and mean, when it was just an old car but he still hung on to it as long as I lived over there so well bear is right because it's a beast it is a big one but it's uh, on the back I've never seen the three-quarter windows on the back that's a that's a first usually it's a one-piece yeah. glass 50, 57 only 57 yep. only the Buicks uh, had and those also. Olds. yeah I, I like the fact that it's it's all original it's not uh, it's not even clean the car's not even really washed it's like uh, it's been driving around since 1957, kind of doing its thing. The, the keys are even in it in case you want to like go pick up some milk or something. This one you could uh, probably pack uh, enough groceries in there or, yeah. or a party you, of 12. If you yeah, you yourself. could probably pack that bug eye Sprite in the back. Yeah. Uh, notice it has the Autronic eye up on the dashboard. Uh, oh yeah, look at that. That's, that that's yeah. Jetson's. Yeah. yeah. I had that in my 62 Cadillac convertible. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't work, but <laughs> it was cool. Yeah. That's awesome. If you know the owner, uh, have him come over and he can, uh, he can talk about it. That's okay. That's okay. We're doing a live right now. Oh. This is another Olds. Uh, this, is not, this is not the pink bear. This is the gold lamb. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. You know. Hey, it's a W30. Yep. Oh, it's a Hearst Olds one yeah, too. Yeah, it's a Hearst. It's uh, I got a lot of memories in cars like this. Yeah. Not necessarily all good, but some <laughs> some pretty good. Usually in the back seat, but uh, at least you have memories. Yeah, that's right. I like the sticker. The, that's that's quite nice. Is this your car? Yeah. Can you come and talk to me about this? What's that again? I'm Fireball. How are you? You. I met you before. What's what's your name? Stan Haverland. Hi, Stan. We so, have an Avanti, uh, right. an AMX, etc. That we've seen you up in Malibu. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great show. So, uh, tell me about this uh, this Hearst. How long have you had it? Well, I've had it about uh, two years now. Okay. It was a one owner car. A doctor in Chico, California, bought it new, and we bought it from his estate, <laughs> and it had set up for about ten years. Everything is original except the paint on the right front fender. Yeah, I can see it. it's quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> the interior is absolutely original. And the unusual thing is in 79, uh, on the G body by GM Cars, they used a 350 either Chevrolet or uh, a 305. Mm -hmm. On the Hearst O's, this was the last time uh, Oldsmobile engines were used in their Cutlass series uh, of cars, and it was only in the uh, first O's, which they made 2,499. Mm. That was it. So, so, why specifically this car for you? I like unusual cars. Mm. To give you an answer, yeah. uh, Friday, I bought a Jensen Healy. Okay. Are you familiar with that yeah, car? Yeah, sure. Sure. So anything unusual. Anything un unusual. <laughs> Oddballs. Yeah. Okay, well then, here's the test question. What What's the worst, not necessarily the worst thing, but the coolest thing you ever did in a car like this? Uh, is your is your wife watching right now? <laughs> <laughs> Just thought I'd ask, you know. <laughs> the coolest thing? Yeah. Race it. Race it. Where, where were Do you racing? <laughs> I actually worked for Firestone for a number of years back in the... Uh, 60s. So you actually had a racing card that you were allowed to, you know, pretty much anywhere. And we, uh, we actually were on some tracks, and uh, doing stupid things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we were all stupid. We at, all? Yeah, in our 20s, and I, I have several friends in their 20s, and they're still stupid. You know, what are you gonna do? Yeah. Good to see you, man. Thanks for Good joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Never know what you're gonna find at Peterson Museum. Yeah, you huh? don't know. Nice Exige Lotus. Yeah, these are these are really fun track cars. Yeah, low and they just fast. Just don't fit me. Yeah, now you're not going to get in there, buddy. Nope, I can't fold up enough to these. You you could probably fold into this a yeah, little bit. Yeah, but I wouldn't want to. We could cut out the top. It's got a sunroof. You could stick your yeah. head out. Now I do like the 928 though. Yeah. Eleven years, okay. I just don't like the maintenance cost. <laughs> well, uh, as as much as I like this, what I really like is what's going on here. Uh, this is a gentleman named Brad who's got this uh, Mazda Miata that's just slightly modified, just a little, just a little bit modified. Yeah, it looks just a hair. Can I talk to you? Absolutely. I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt, but uh, 
This car is bonkers. Uh, Brad, right? Brad, that's correct. Okay, yeah. Brad, you got a a, um, a couple of Japanese cars. Yep. Three? Three. Uh, yeah, I have a, an 03 Infiniti FX35. Mm-hmm. I have a 91 Turbo MR2, yeah. and then this 94 Miata. Yeah, because we don't care about those other cars because they're not here. They're not here, the, right. This <laughs> one is ridiculous. Uh, and did you do all the work yourself? Not most of it. Um, you know, I'm a bolt-on kind of guy, so I did replace the motor in my garage. Mm -hmm. um, but some of the That's not a bolt-on. Well, I consider that bolt-on. <laughs> <laughs> you just you just wrench it in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know some of the fabrication I didn't do, the tuning of the motor I didn't do. Um, I know where to go for the pros for stuff that matters. Yeah, yeah. So tell me some of the uh, some of the mods because there's quite a bit of stuff going on. Yeah, here. I, I mean, I, I, what I would say is that there is anything I haven't modded on this car. The 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 motor is the original motor, but um, I replaced the internals with uh, stock with uh, forged pistons and rods, mm -hmm. uh, reinforced the head, mm -hmm. added a supercharger. Um, and then, you know, the suspension is aftermarket also. It has a, a real-time adjustment. It's called the EDFC Active Pro, and it adjusts dampening and compression real-time as uh, you're going around the track or wherever you are. Yeah. Well, these, you know, these guys are from Custom Mics, and, and this is Custom Mike. How are you doing? Uh, and he's, he's drooling right now, so I, I figure it's got to be a good job if Mike likes it. <laughs> I'm glad <laughs> I got the He's smiling. Up. Look at how much he's smiling. Yeah, yeah. You can't tell, but he's... It's my all-in-one. I go to the yeah. track in this car, I mm -hmm. go to shows, and uh, drive around the canyon on the weekends. Yeah, spectacular. Uh, it's, you know, this is kind of a power to weight is really a, a fantastic track uh, or canyon car. Yes, yes. Um, I, it weighs about 2450 with me in it. And I was just at uh, AEM yesterday on the dyno, and we uh, put down 225 to the rear wheels. Not bad, wow. not bad. And that, that for canyon carving, that's about perfect. I, I agree. For this car, yeah. I yeah. think it's about perfect. Yeah. Um, I've been in other Miatas that are more powerful, yeah. and they scare me a little bit. Yeah. Are you friends with the cops out there? I, you know, I try to avoid them at all costs. Yeah. 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 Don't don't we all? It's not bad for a car. You got to kind of dress on. You know. Yeah. You know, I I've frequently said I prefer to take this car out under the cover of darkness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is why it's black. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, although, if there are any cops watching out in Malibu, um, a lot of those guys are, are car fans. They love the cars and they love seeing them. Yeah. Uh, just we don't want to be stupid in them necessarily. I agree. I, and I am not stupid on the road. That's why I go to the track. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I will say that everything about this car is 100% legal. Nice. Nice. Uh, on the back of the uh, back of the car, there's some stickers from all the different tracks that you've hit. Uh -huh. uh, spectacular. Thanks for your time, man. Absolutely. Great stuff. Thank you. There's a nice 190. Old school. It's funny. This is in the exact same scheme as the uh, as the Mustang we started with. The silver is a little, little tiny bit warmer. But I wouldn't be surprised if the same guy painted it because it's quite beautiful. There's quite a few of these uh, around town. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily as nice as this one. Fairly popular ride. Yeah. So is this. Yeah, this one... Uh, what would you rather have, the 190 Mercedes or this uh, classic? I'm not sure what year this is. This looks like it could be. It's not a 58. It's got 56, 56. plates on it. Yeah, it's uh, a 56. I would assume it's selling in that area. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. the plate isn't necessarily always an indication of exactly what the year is. Well, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, um, it's a toss-up. You know, I've had a couple of Corvettes and... He's got his Um, oh yeah, it's display 56. thing there. Yeah. So it says 56. Yeah. Oh yeah. So if you couldn't have a Pontiac and you had to pick between these two roadsters, what would you have? <laughs> Honestly, this is the Norwegian answer. That's well, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think I'd still go with the 190 SL. Yeah. Uh, you classic. can sell it and yeah. buy a few Corvettes, probably. Yeah, very huh? nice. This looks like a track car. Terlingua Racing Team. Yeah, this looks like a uh, a Mustang that would do well. Out on the tracks, so I got a number on it. Roll Purpose cage. Built. Yeah, this is really built uh, strictly for track stuff. Very nice. <laughs> yeah. How you doing? Question about the fifty-seven ass. Yeah. Go talk to Fireball. Oh, the pink bear. <laughs> the pink bear. Do you want to go back over there? Or you want sure. to talk about that? Let's go quickly Let's talk about, about the, the pink bear. The old. We'll get some exercise. Tell me your name again. Kim. 
Kim. Okay. So as we're walking back, Kim, uh, how long have you had this car? A month. Just a month. That's it. That's it. Welcome to California. No, right? I live here. <laughs> I, no. found, I found it in Ohio. Uh huh. Um, 83 year old guy. His dad bought it new. Wow. And his dad passed away 35 years ago, and it's been sitting in a garage for 35 years. Wow. Uh, those are the the uh, the amazing finds. Just when you think that you that all the barn finds have been found, and right. there's always stuff that's hiding uh, original owners, everything else. Mm -hmm. So you know how many miles are on it? Fifty-eight thousand. Fifty-eight thousand. That's it. That's it. What a find! It drives beautifully. Original interior without yeah. a rip anywhere. You know that's hard. That's the reason I bought the car because yeah. interiors are really hard to put together. And where was this car? Ohio. And how did you come across it? eBay, I think. And I negotiated for like a year with a guy. Yeah. I wanted a copy of, uh, you know, the paperwork on it, you know, the title. He wouldn't give it to me. He said his friends all told me it was a scam for him to send a <laughs> copy of a title. What are you going to do with a copy of a title? Yeah. So it took me a year to finally uh, convince uh, the guy. Convince the guy. Yeah. yeah. Well, congratulations. It's like a new birth. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if you know the spinner hubcaps that these cars had. They had clips that held them in place. Mm -hmm. They are a pain in the butt. <laughs> I had the tires put on. The caps are in my trunk. Yeah. But the tire company put the tires on, and they handed me the caps, and they said, we're not touching these Wow. Things. <laughs> and uh, her husband has a 59 Oldsmobile. And he told me he had to glue the caps with Gorilla Glue <laughs> onto some some wheel things yeah. because he couldn't get the caps on the car wow. either. So did you just pull them off? Well, Is that why they're not? We took them off to put the tires on. Oh, I see. I see. And uh, nice. I had to find a couple of these little stupid cl clips, you yeah. know, which yeah. I, I have now. But yeah. Well, you, you want to be challenged, right? Sure. Yeah. That's the biggest challenge I have, getting the hubcaps on. <laughs> Thanks for your time. Thank and you. And congratulations. Thank you. Very cool. Excuse me, is your mic still on? Yes, it is. We're doing live. Oh, okay. Would you like to see my husband? It's 59, red and white, old 98. Where is it? It's um, third row. Yeah. We're going to we're gonna make our way. We'll make our way to it. Okay. And we'll meet you there, for sure. Thank you. Too many cars. Although, on the... On the uh, Backside here is something that uh, I didn't expect to see, the new Mustang Mach-E. Oh. Uh, I still wasn't even sure that these were for sale. Huh. You either uh, love them or hate them, huh? Yeah, I haven't seen them. You know, if, if honestly, for me, if they had stuck, uh, called it the Stallion or something yeah. different like that, I think yeah. that people would have responded Carrying better. over the Mustang name was yeah. uh... but let But let's look at this classic first, because uh, that's a little more fun, huh? <laughs> Yes, and yeah. uh, right now they're worth a little bit more mint, so to say. Yeah, this is a, this is flawless. Wow, beautiful. Yeah. It's interesting that they chose uh, a cream and gray combo. You think that works? That's probably a factory uh, combo too. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. Yeah. He's got the pop out safari uh, windshield. Another one that's meticulously restored. You know? Yeah, this one is is virtually flawless. I don't see anything on it. You know, you can walk around and say, oh, they missed a spot. My but... arms hurt just looking at the paint, you know. Yeah. Great stuff. Look at this motor. Wow. That's a beauty. Really nice. Look like Weber's on there probably, huh? Who's, uh, whose car is this? Can I talk to you for a second? We're shooting live with custom mics. Come on over here. Only a few hundreds of thousands of people watching nervous oh no okay okay what drove, what drove through los angeles <laughs> <laughs> that would make you nervous uh tell me about the bus it's a 1966 13 window mm -hmm. and it's uh, been all restored and updated and upgraded and everything by that uh, dr rick up in monterey california mm -hmm. it has a uh, obviously a larger motor with uh, weber carburetors mm -hmm. independent rear suspension front disc brakes and uh, it's uh, a neat 
Stunning. Neat 66 bus. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Norm normally you would see a bunch of surf decals on buses like this, but right. you have my, a few little that's ones. my favorite, <laughs> my third favorite town in the world is Zermatt. Oh, really? Yeah, we've got it from a friend of ours that had it uh, restored and did the whole thing. And uh, I've had it just about a month, but uh, my family really loves it. First VW I've ever owned. Wow, and it's flawless. It looks like it's brand new. Yeah, it's it's nice. Yeah. Clean, I cleaned it. <laughs> you cleaned it. Actually, it it's, clean it's probably <laughs> nicer yeah. than and, it was and it brand has new. A, a rag top on it too, which yeah. is kind of neat on a bus. Yeah. Great, great job. Fantastic. Thanks Thank for showing you. us. Very Thank cool. You very okay. Much. Thank you. All right. Thanks for having. Me. You bet. All right, let's take a look at that Maki. -E. I don't know if the guy's around, but. Uh, you know, I, from a design language standpoint, I like, I like the language of this car. You know that that they they brought in a lot of the stuff that's Mustang, but uh, obviously they got a lot of flack from calling it a Mustang. Yeah. But you know, honestly, if you if you are thinking about buying one of these cars and you're on the fence just because of the name, mm -hmm. then you know I would I would think again and just kind of ignore that fact. Yeah. It doesn't interesting solution for a door handle. You know. What does the car really do? Yeah. Not necessarily the name on the plate. Yeah, it's a performance EV, and it's got some good power, and uh, it's quite nicely done. Yeah. yeah, I actually see a little bit of the old Mustang taillights in that mm -hmm. three rib. Uh, I think I'd rather have one have. of those. Yeah, you'd rather have the Mopar. <laughs> yeah. This is a beast. I just had one of these. Uh, this is the Hellcat version. I had one of these about two weeks ago. And it's it's a monster. My my wife didn't want to drive it, and I said, you know, can you can drive it like, you know, like it's a, a grocery getter if you want. Yeah. You know. Well, actually, my daughter has a uh, Scat Cat. Oh yeah. That uh, she just got a little while ago. Yeah. Beautiful, nice rubber. Here's a slat nose next to it. I used to do these back in the early days when I was yep. working at a shop in Berkeley. Just the fender, or did you have to do the hood? And stuff. I did the fenders and, and the quarters, ah. most of them. Yeah. That's just a straight metal conversion. You know. Right, right. Next to it is a uh, beautiful Dino. Check that out. Good morning, guys. Nice to see you. Good, Good to see you. Is this yours? No, I brought the Aventador. Uh, the, oh, great. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're doing a live with custom mics. Uh, checking out everything there is at the show today. <laughs> Yeah, for sure, for sure. We're gonna head that direction. Look, look at this. That's insane. Yeah. Thirty-four. This thing's crazy. Wow. Let's look at this for a second. Look at the size of those lights. Right here. Yes. Stunning. Let's talk to the man that owns this uh, this small car. Hey. How are you? Hey, I'm doing good. How are you today? <laughs> good to see you. This isn't mine. This is this gentleman. Oh, he's got a good. How time. are you? What's your name? Can't tell. Charlie Mulhern. Nice. Uh, so Charlie, um, this is a rather small car you got going on here. It is. This is the smallest of uh, the models. Of <laughs> the Packards. The Super 8 is longer, and the 12 is 146 point something inch wheelbase. And they, why? They wanted a 12, but they won't fit in a regular two car garage. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, why? Why something like this for you? It's always interesting to see what people are attracted to. What is it about a, the original Packards and the, and you know this style of car for you? I always, uh, I really like as a kid. My dad hated them. My mom used to take me to the local parks. When, remember when car clubs used to get together and have shows on weekends yep. at local parks? And she, now, now most of them are eating clubs. Now then, <laughs> <laughs> she used to be amazed. I, I love all cars, but I, I like the big old stuff. Yeah. Like the lar the homes that we used to build. Yeah. And it, uh, she said something that really finally hit home now after finally buying one. She told me, Charlie, good people don't own cars like that. <laughs> and it just has been, <laughs> it's a real learning experience. Yeah, for sure. Can we open the door and take yeah. a look inside? Look at that suicide, beautiful. Do you have a car or anything? Yeah. So you publish online and stuff? 
This is with, we're doing this with custom mics and we're live right now, so they're, they're listening to everything we're saying. Look at that, wow, that is a, that's a gorgeous color. Yeah, love the wood tree. Now, was too. the car in this shape when you got it? Yeah. Okay. It was a painted pig when I bought it. Mm. And I, I fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. Yeah, well, I don't Came from you. one of the most disreputable people in the Packard <laughs> business. But I was... Uh, you were smitten. Uh, cancer came home, and uh, mm. the doctors were... I, I wouldn't do the stuff to hide my money, and the doctors were quickly wiping me out, so yeah. I went and bought this for myself. Good for you. Good for you. And That's I, at least I don't have to worry about losing the money now. <laughs> right. And here's some, I want to show you something you might find interesting. I don't know how to preserve them, and just in the time I've had them, they're fading. Look at the service stickers in the door jam. Oh, yeah. Take a look at those. Wow. It came from Philadelphia. A man in the late 50s, when he saw what was going to happen with Packard, a man named Arthur Prophet bought the stories very either four or six Packards off of used car lots. Mm -hmm. Then it lived a few years in Wichita, Kansas. Does that give you any inkling of what the guy did for a living? His company provided financing to companies like Boeing and Stern, the you mm -hmm. know aircraft companies. Yeah. Then he moved out here and the cars all went into storage in a warehouse, uh, from what I understand, in Santa Monica, south of the pier. Mm -hmm. And he married a woman named Carol Young, Robert Young's oldest daughter. Okay. She's on, she's still alive, but she, I tried to contact her. She wouldn't talk to me about the cars or him. It wasn't a very good divorce, but uh, yeah. Amazing. The guy that I got it from, there's pictures of Robert Young in the passenger seat when they picked it up one time. <laughs> and Robert Young got out of the car and told him, don't take any more pictures of me, you'll just try to sell them for money. <laughs> he was so ticked off at how much he charged to work on the car. But Great like stuff. All of us, when we, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. we remember when things were a lot less expensive. Yeah, yeah. And you got a lot better work done. Right, right. But Well... I appreciate you telling hey. us those. There's, there's so many stories with a car like this, you know, it's something that you can go on for a long time. Is it, that thing on? It is. It's been on since we started. We're oh, live. You're going to edit that, right? Oh, uh, well, it's live right now. <laughs> They're watching right now. Way to go. Thank you. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, there's so many great cars here at the show. Hey, guys. How's it going? Good. 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 We're, we're, we're getting there. We got a lot of cars to go through. So um, uh, if you guys, I'm assuming you guys are asking questions or you have some comments and things. Uh, it's tough to talk to, to people about their stories because uh, there's just so much, especially with a car like that. So we're going to try to get through a little faster if we can. Uh, let's take a look at this uh, classic truck over here, 1940. Uh, this is obviously a Chevrolet that's been... Um, done up a few in a few ways uh the nice thing is, is you can't really criticize these cars in any way that they're done because it, in in many ways they're pieces of art and we've talked about this before is that this is someone's interpretation you could do a show uh, this entire show could be trucks just like this and they'd all be different and you have to appreciate where someone's coming from and their uh their artistry their the love of color their love of uh their passion for power all these things Here's you know, a really nice success book. is uh, doing the best you can. That's you right. Got, you That's know? right. So you know we appreciate these stories and and the car hobby and the uh, uh, the passion that people have for these cars. It's like this Volvo. Not everybody's into orange, but I appreciate that someone you know took the time to think about this, even if it was a factory color. Yeah, this would be great with an LS in it, though. It would be. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. Here's a Volvo wagon next to it. Some more Swedish, Swedish love. Yeah. I can tell it's your car because you got an orange hat. This one. Bo both of them. Double duty. The, the huh? Double duty. The man. The uh, are are you sweet? Are you Swedish? German. German. German guy with the Swedish cars. Yeah. 
Good. Very nice. Well, at least he appreciates quality, you know. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Good job. Look at this woody. This is beautiful. 38. Uh, this is um, a Plymouth. Yeah. This is great. Look at all these stickers. How you doing? Santa Cruz woodies. This is yours? Yes. Come here. Tell me about this woody of yours. Yeah, well, Come on over here. We'll get this car in the background. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I, uh, I bought this car 42 years ago for $1,200, crashed and derelict in Ooh. Santa Monica. Wow. And uh, the guy was asking 1600 and I, we were able to negotiate 1200 And I still, have a, I still have the stub from the cashier's check. And I still have the newspaper, L.A. Times, Sunday edition, antique and classic cars. There was four columns of cars for uh, four Woodies that weekend. And I went and looked at this one, and... And I shouldn't have bought it. It was so rough. But I, I, I I'm a woodworker, so I said, oh, I can, I can do this. That's great. So I restored the car myself. I did all the woodwork. I did the paint, uh, the assembly, the wiring harness. I bought the wiring harness, but I installed it. Yeah. And I did all that. Take a look at the roof inside. The whole car is wood. The, the floor is wood. The, the, the roof is wood. It's, it's all wood. It helps to have that talent. Oh, it does, yeah. yeah. Well, I wouldn't have been able to afford this car if I had shops yeah. to it, yeah. yeah. And uh, then I eventually I found out it was one of three in the world remaining. I was, I've was i been in the Woody Club for 42 years, and uh, ex-surfers, we all tend to, well, my buddies still have Woodies that they've had for years. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I found out how rare this car was. Beautiful. Absolutely you, stunning. Yeah, I'm so lucky. And uh, the car is uh, what they consider to be a resto mod, mm -hmm. so the, the car looks original. Mm -hmm. But I have a late model uh, V8, a 70s V8, right. with an automatic transmission and a four nine inch differential. So you're actually still going surfing with it? No, I don't surf anymore. <laughs> no, you see what I have in the back here? I had this decal make it made up. I used to rip, hang 10, and shoot the pier. Yeah, yeah, yeah nice. I used to surf with these guys. I was, oh, yeah. on, the, I was on that surfboard team. And I also did Austin four, Baird. I also did four years Vietnam in the Navy. Wow. Uh -huh. Great job. Thank Good find. Much. That's a beauty. Yeah, thank thank you. you for your service. Well, absolutely. And uh, and Southern California is really the place for Woodies. I know. You get it now. Yeah. There's you. a Santa Barbara Woody Club. There is, uh, there's a bunch of clubs in uh, Southern California for the Woodies. Yeah, I'm in the Southern California Woody Club, yeah. and, and I used to belong to the San Diego and the Santa Barbara, but I only belong to three now. I belong to the, the, San, the L.A., uh, Southern California Woody Club, the Santa Cruz Woody Club, and the National Woody Club. Nice. Tell me your name again. Jim Cooney. Thank you, Jim. Hey, I appreciate your time and your hey, service. Yeah, well, thanks for stopping by. Okay. Right. Here's the Dodge Power Wagon. Who, who owns this one? The man with the plan right there. Can you tell? Uh, why, why this truck for you, buddy? Um, I've always liked the Power Wagons. I mean, I'm a truck guy to yeah. begin with, and this is kind of the, this is, uh, to me, the epitome of trucks. And, and is there something uh, uh, about this particular one? Um, this is actually my second one. This one's been, and this one's modified. And uh, I had I had a, uh, a 1946 power wagon that was completely bone stock, but it wasn't very fun to drive. And so I wanted a driver. So this one's a modified version and something I can drive. So Wait, tell me your name. Chris Lofthouse. Nice to meet you, Chris. Thanks Thank so you. much. You, are, you look like his son. I am. Yes, I am. What's your name? Uh, William. William. Thank you guys. Beautiful job. It looks really nice. Very cool. Very cool. Here's a, uh, a classic Maserati. Beautiful. This uh, I love these back windows. Yeah, that car's got more glass than any car that I've seen. You know, and that's why I have the white interior because if you have black, you you can't sit in the car. No, it's just kind of glowing in there. Yeah, it gets way too hot, and so. Hopefully, it's got a good AC. Actually, yeah. actually, it's on right now with the windows down. <laughs> yeah, I have AC, but the Italians on the air conditioning, it's kind of uh, same as the heater. They say it's like a hamster blowing through a straw. So um, my Dino Ferrari had the same type of air conditioning as what's on this at York yeah. system, which they're not known for how great they work. Yeah, and they weigh like a ton. Is it for sale? Yes, it is. I've had it 34 years, so. Okay. All right, so if anybody's interested in the, uh, As parts where we go? Too. I have a parts car. It's only a month apart in production. Uh -huh. So out of 1,100 cars, I have two that are a month in production. I would have a five-year. 
And what year is this? 1970. And it belonged to baby Doc Dubé of Haiti. When he was 19 years old, he, he bought this car. Fantastic. So I bought it after. And then I had it 34 years. Tell me your name? Yeah, Joe Cooney. Thank you, Joe. Uh, great stuff. That's a yeah, beautiful it design. Took seven uh, cow hides to do the interior. There's that much leather in there. Wow. And then one black hide to do the dash. So great stuff. Great stuff. Thank you, Matt. You want to catch them on the Aventador? Yes, we can go talk about that. Sure. Yeah. Okay, this out uh, breaks uh, Pantera and Porsche. Oh, okay. It's got ten and a half inch discs. So this car was actually uh, had better brakes than what the two seater sports cars. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Okay, we're going to go look at this uh, new supercar <laughs> in contrast. It is stark in contrast. Yeah, this uh, this looks like a full-size Hot Wheels to me. Yes. It's the kind of Hot Wheels that you can fit in, which I always like. Right. Uh, tell me about this Aventador. Well, it belongs to Lamborghini, so it's mine. It turns into a pumpkin on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, so it's mine in the sense that I get I have the keys in my pocket. Yeah. And yep. I get to bring it home. For today. Yeah, I had it since Friday. It's a, a 760 horsepower V12. Mm -hmm. Zero to 60 is about 2.9 seconds. Yep. And uh, the price about 670 as it sits. Yeah. It's an awesome car. It goes 217 miles an hour. Which is great for like grocery getting. Yeah, usually I, Wilshire's fine, but on the side streets, it's just too hot, too yeah. much. Yeah, right? sure, sure. And, uh, but seriously, this car is spectacular in that it does exactly what it looks like it does. Mm. It goes faster than hell. Look at the brakes on the car that has discs that are the size of most wheels. Right, right. Giant calipers. Here's the question. Are you going to let me sit in it? Of Ooh. course. All right, let's, uh, let's flip around. Can I sit in the driver's side? Please is that all right? Yeah, I, won't, I don't have any knives or switch plates in my pocket, so I'm in pretty good shape. But I'm gonna to try to squeeze in. It's kind of like a, kind of like a seal in a sardine can. Yeah. I'm gonna fit in there. Very much. It makes a noise when you get out. It's a, the, the suction kind of holds you. <laughs> the suction. Very nice. Well, you have to start it. Lift up the red button. Okay. And then, I mean, put, put the key in there so it'll recognize it. Okay. Hold it down. Push again. Okay. I hope there's no one sitting back there. I mean, how to wear this. It's, it's, it's your size. They do have a, a larger and smaller, but this is a, this is your size car. Yeah. So this is a kind of a 95th percentile version of this. Uh, it, this actually can fit quite a quite a variety of size people. Yeah. The tops are in the front. They stow in the front. It's a roadster, obviously, but it's uh, very easy to take off because they're all carbon fiber. Yeah. So the SVJ is super veloce super fast and the J model is a little lighter weight so it's about 110 pounds lighter than the regular SV. Faster than heck and it's got an 8500 RPM red line so it screams. Yeah I can tell I mean I live off PCH in Malibu and when these guys roll by you got to stop what you're doing yeah. and take notice. Yeah that's no question about it. It's really a lot of fun to drive. It's a very visceral shape. Beautiful technology is extraordinary. I, I appreciate you allowing me to sit in it and uh, <laughs> press and hold. Yeah, and now like I got one hand because of this, but oh, so I've done it before. Done it before. Yeah. yeah, quite nice. Uh, so this car belongs to Lamborghini. You have it for the week to be able to, to go out and, and I write for a magazine called Hot Living and for the Beverly Hills Courier. Fantastic. We've met before. Sure. Maybe you recognize yeah, I do. Face now. <laughs> But go ahead, give me your name again. Tim Lappin. Okay, Tim. Nice to meet you. Fantastic. Nice to meet you uh, thank you for allowing us to come by and check it out. It's uh, extraordinary. Mr. Fireball, nice you to bet. See you again. Okay, good to Take see you guys. Care. Bye bye. Thanks a lot. All right. So, the big question the Aventador or the uh, the Corvette over here? What do you think? I'd, buy, I'd take this, sell it, and buy a couple of Corvettes. <laughs> That's usually the standard answer. <laughs> buy a couple? I think you could buy probably more than a couple. But, well, uh, yeah, and then i take my wife out to dinner, you know. Yep. This is beautiful. I think, is this a Maserati also? Right, it's a Bertoni design, but uh, I'm not 100% sure on these cars. I sort of Volta? That's about as far as Italian goes for me. Yeah, it's uh, different. 
But that's why you come here, right? To Although uh, linguine alio olio, I know that too. <laughs> I don't know how to say either, you know? Yeah. A lot of interesting cars today. Yep, a lot, a lot of really cool stuff. Today. So in uh, in just a little while, I just want to mention this, in a little while at 10 o'clock, uh, I'm going to be doing another live uh, with Superfly Autos yep. on their Instagram page, uh, Superfly Autos, and we're launching Diecast Heroes magazine. So any of you guys that, I, I don't know anybody that loves cars like we do that doesn't have diecast at home, whether it's Hot Wheels or Matchbox. I'm guilty. Yep, yep, and uh, that's that's the real addiction. I mean, if you can have addiction to the cars and you can afford to have a lot of cars, great. But we can all afford to enjoy the Hot Wheels. A big shout out to Mattel, Brian Benedict, who's at Mattel, uh, our friends there. Uh, but we're going to be doing a live, and we're going to be launching that magazine yeah, uh, at I, 10 o'clock. I can't o see the clock on here, so you're going to have to tell me when we're going to close. Yeah, I'll, I'll remind you. Yeah. This is cool. This is kind of, I would, I would trim this scary cool. Because you're literally sitting on the ground, kind of like that uh, Aventador, but you got less around you now. Yeah, but you're, you're protected. I mean, it's, uh... But you, you can see, you know, uh, cars going by, bowling balls going by, things you that... You can smell the environment. You can smell the... Uh... You can feel the environment. <laughs> So what uh, what year Morgan is this? It's a new. It's actually a new 2019. Okay, this is a brand new car. Look at that. Oh, it's got 4,000 miles on it. Yeah. It's my demonstrator. And just uh, it's got a club sport motor, which is uh, the factory arrow racing tuned off. motor. It's a two liter direct injection with uh, Miata mm -hmm. based five speed. Yeah. Uh, These are fun track cars. Yeah, I mean, they, they embarrass Cobras, Corvettes, Ferraris. <laughs> We're I live, mean, so you know just, that's getting in there. <laughs> well, I mean, just go look at films of yep. Freshman, Richard Freshman, yep. Lou Spencer, uh, no. Jeff up in uh, Northern California. I mean, they just, uh, Brian Howlett, you know, beating Sterling Moss. I mean, it's, uh, yep. if you know how to drive, this car will let you do it. Yep. You yeah, know, uh, beautiful. Tell me your name. Uh, Dennis Glavis. Great, Dennis. Thanks for uh, showing us around. Yeah, thank you. Very cool. Yeah, great day. We got an Avanti and we got a Porsche over here. Let's go talk about the Bugatti. The Bugatti. Yeah, let's talk about the Bugatti. This is a friend of mine, Lonnie. Uh, I'm not sure where Lonnie is. Let's see if I can spot him because Lonnie's a rock and roller and he's usually pretty easy to spot. I might have to I might have to grab him and then bring okay. him back over to the car. No problem. But this is a, uh, a this is a replica that uh, Lonnie just bought recently, and I think this may be the first show that he brought it to. But it's just Very really cool. cool. It's it's a Bugatti, but it's uh it's a Bugatti you can take to the store and go shopping and not go be to the, afraid to be out in public. With not it. at all, not at all. And that's uh, for some people that's a really great choice, as to opposed to driving a uh, thirty million dollar you know museum car around or you know. <laughs> The only guy I know that would do that comfortably is probably Bruce Meyer from the museum. You yeah, know, he's. Uh, yeah, I've seen him do it. <laughs> yeah, he'll, he'll bring. Uh, he'll grab anything from the museum show floor other than the Batmobile. Yeah. Uh, that we did, and and he'll bring it out. Here's a couple of, couple of t uh, twin sons of different moms. Pantera. Another car I can't fit in. 72, and a Ford <laughs> GT. Now I had a friend that bought this car, in Oregon. He flew up to Oregon, bought the car, and then he uh, pulled it out of the lot. And he went sideways on the street and went off an embankment and totaled the car and had to fly home. Wow. I Maybe think take it was... a couple of classes first. <laughs> he needed to go to the track, I think. But it's uh, scary. Once you once you get over four or five hundred horsepower, it's just it, it gets ridiculous. Yeah, you know? yeah. But you know, he was laughing. It wasn't. Uh, it was one of those kinds of things that, uh, <laughs> as long as he didn't die, look at that flying pig. That's awesome. Yeah. This one's been around for a while. Yeah. PCA. We've done a lot of great stuff with the uh, Porsche Club of America. Yeah. We actually have a Magnus Walker coloring book that we're doing next month. It's going to be pretty cool. Look at all these badges. These are great. Very cool stuff. 912. All right. Porsche. We got uh, what amounts to be maybe the last row here. Yeah. Still exciting. Yep. This is a friend of mine that brought this uh, GT in. Great job. I should sit in the car and just say, oh, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, let's not the do door, that. The doors are open. <laughs> yeah, no, no. He's a good guy. If we spot him, we'll bring him over yeah. here. Oh, look at this over here. Sob Sonnet. Yeah, we, we, he's taking a picture, so we don't want to mess with you. You're right? Okay. This is a, uh, 
a pretty rare car. You don't see these at all. Oh. In fact, I haven't seen one of these Alphas in a uh, probably. Oh, wait, it's an Alpha. I thought it was a Saab. Yeah, it looks like the Saab. <laughs> yeah. It looks a lot like the Saab. They copied each other. The, I haven't seen one of these cars in easily a decade. You know, when the, when the tire looks like it's gigantic, yep. the car is tiny. Yeah, but these are custom too. This is not, you know, this is not factory, I don't think. Yeah, but I mean, you know, in, yep. in perspective to the rest of the car, you know. This, this is really well restored. That's very nicely done. An interesting color. Now the car I can't fit in. <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna fit in this. We'll find you something. Uh, I got I got a plenty of problems <laughs> folding into mine too, or That's my right. own ones, you know. Well, we have nothing but problems today with the nice little bed gimbal over thing. here. NSX. Right. They did a good job with this. Yeah, this is a, this was a really cool car. Yeah. Um, it's kind of sad they stopped marketing. It was. They really put it together nicely. Well, they do have a new version of it. Yeah, I, I like this one. Yeah. Another orange Targa over here. It's a nice yeah, Corvette. So much to see. Not enough time. An 11. Mm, this I'm is sweet right Cadillac. here. And Buicks. Mm. Yeah, both these. But this this is a little bit rarer. You know, you don't you don't see this car. These scallop lines are just stunning. I know Buick, the way they Buick did this. just went all out, fifty nine yeah. and sixty. You know. You know, in this in this era of uh, streamlining and the jet age, these cars were extraordinary. Did Pontiac do some stuff like this? Oh yeah. Uh, if you think of the like fifty nine sixty Bonnevilles. Yep. Um, same kind of styling. Yeah. Um, aer aerodynamic. Look at these uh, these scallops. You know, they, they talk about the sculpture in cars back then. Say so we don't have any cars now. Everything's designed subtly. It's one box. It yeah, doesn't necessarily yeah. have the extremes of the, the stuff. I'd like to see some of that come back. Yeah, actually, it, you know, it's very distinctive. Um, even even amongst you know, like Chevys, even of, of that era, you think about the big '59 and '60s Chevys had those big flared uh, rear ends on them. Mm -hmm. And you could tell what car it was because it didn't look like anything else. Yeah. So this is a, a Buick LeSabre. I'm not sure what year it's a, you know what the year this is? I think it's a I'm 56. A oh, you say a six? I think it's a, I think it's a little bit older. Love that steering wheel. Yeah, look at that. You could actually climb through that steering wheel. It's so huge. Yeah. Is this yours? 59 Come or here. 60, I'm not we're, sure. We're, we're shooting live. What? We're shooting live. You want to talk about it? Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a 56? No, it's a 1960. It is a 60, you were right. 60 was kind of a rounded off version of the uh, 59. 59 okay. was a little sharper angles and yeah. more sculpting on the 60. I'm the third owner, third, third registered owner. Yeah, it's it's a beauty. Uh, you know, with all the sculpture and, and the uh, uh, amazing design language of the year. A absolutely. We called it Delta Wing because of the, the styling on the rear and even this mimicking yeah. that. A lot of aircraft inspired things. Sure. This was like a, a wing of a B-52 a bomber and this would be the, the engines mm -hmm, mm -hmm. kind of transporting into the exhaust. Right, right. Yeah, so, Harley Hero was at his heyday oh, yeah. at that time. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, hero of the day. Yeah. Note to some of the car companies, um, a little more ag aggressive design language, please. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of these supercars are, are neat, and certainly the Aventador is neat. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on, but simplicity is key with uh, with car design. Yeah. Uh, one of my friends, Frank Stevenson, who we're doing a book with, also amazing designer he talks about three levels the three lines that you can create in design that can identify virtually any car and that's the top line silhouette the belt line and the bottom of the car uh here's a uh, a 98 that uh has been sitting over here uh calling my name and there's a young lady that wanted to talk about this car and and uh i don't see her at this point 
She's right there. Can you can you grab her? Yeah. Can you grab her? Thank you. I'll do that on video. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Scotty. Scotty, another amazing photographer. Yeah. Hey, Scotty. Oh, Darren. This is Scotty. He's uh, an incredible photographer, automotive photographer. What? Uh, One of the best. And I'm also videoing he's, he's as shoot, well today. He's shooting live. Yeah. So, what? What's your favorite here today? I. Um, it's tough. I love the trucks. The trucks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's not that always little, that, that way. That little red truck right there. Mm -hmm. I would drive that away. <laughs> I think the keys are in it, so ah. you didn't hear it from me. Yeah. All right. We're going to talk about this '98. This is yours. Okay, this is mine. Okay. What's your name? Alex Kwachansky, call me Alex. I will call you Alex because that's your name. That's very good. Right? Okay, yep. so tell me about this 98. I've seen it here at the Peterson many sure, times, yeah. yep. but uh, it's uh, it's always a, a stunner. Everyone just loves it and, like they saw it for the first time. Well, this car was my dream car. In 1959, I had three uncles who had them and I thought they were the most gorgeous thing I'd ever seen. And I always wanted one. And I was finally, 50 years later, able to get my hands on one. Uh, it was originally an Earl Scheib white, and I discovered it was a two-tone car. This it was this was built on the Cadillac chassis, as was the Electra, mm -hmm. and it's got the 394 engine boosted up to 315 horsepower in 1959, and it has one of the various versions of the Oldsmobile transmission, because they they invented automatics, and they kept changing them over the years, and this one was. Actually, it works perfectly. I shouldn't say it because, you know, never should never say that. Mm. Um, the interior is basically, the, the, the fabric is a little bit altered, and I'm not changing because it it's close enough. Yep. Uh, the vinyl and everything else is original. I created my own headliner because there wasn't one, and you can't get those rods. Uh. So if anybody's listening to this who can make the rods, that would be a great idea. <laughs> Uh, How do they reach out to you? Give them an email address or something. Sure. I'm Alex at BigDetroitCars.com. Again, BigDetroitCars.com. Just remember, big cars. Okay, good deal. Um, and the, the hubcaps are the biggest curse that was ever put on a car. Oldsmobile, for, for about six years, they used clips, yep. and they hooked on with clips. Well, there's nothing worse than putting on a clip. And you, you need actually three arms or four arms to do it properly. And then you're supposed to put on eight of them or some damn thing. Well, anyway, somebody taught me to put it on with a glue it to a rim. And I glued it to a rim and I learned how to get And they're just. And you solved the problem. I solved the problem. Yeah. And they don't pop off. Uh, the number one feature of the car that everybody likes are the taillights, which is what got me originally. The regular Oldsmobiles have like a flat kind of a taillight. This is all chrome. Yep. And I have extras of those, just to make sure. And when I bought them on eBay, some guy wrote to me from some island off of Italy. And he said, do you have a spare taillight lens for 15? I couldn't believe a guy there would have one. Yep. I shipped it to him. He was apparently quite happy. Uh, the car runs incredibly well. It's smooth, quiet. Uh, I haven't done a lot of mechanical work to it. Almost nothing. I shouldn't, again, I shouldn't say that, because it may change. Uh, but it starts, Beautiful. it runs, it's great to drive, and it's a one-car car show on the street. If I stop next to a Ferrari, no one sees the Ferrari. <laughs> that's true. And that, that's my story. And yeah. that, did you see the 57 Olds? Yes. Okay, yeah. That was, yeah. That was their best, that was their most popular year. Right. Was, right. was 57. This, I think, was second to it. Beautiful. But this was my dream car. I've had it for a while, and it's not for sale. Good to know. Uh, go. Good to know. But if you want to help help this gentleman out with some of the some of the parts and things that you had mentioned, then uh, they can reach out to you. They can reach out to me. I, and I do have spare parts. I bought a lot of stuff. Great. And I don't need a whole lot of the stuff, but I will not sell my extra set of taillights. <laughs> Good Just to know. Just in case some idiot hits me. <laughs> and if you notice, by the way, they put this handle here, and I have no idea why. Apparently, it was too hard to reach up to close it. That's, so a, that's a lot of metal right there. It's a lot of metal. I have two cars bigger than this. I like big cars. Yep. I like land yachts. And I bought the last Lincoln, the last giant car ever built with the last giant engine. is a 78 Lincoln Mark V with a 460 and the Emilio Pucci interior. And it was a foot longer than this car. Wow. Wow. There you go. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you for your time, guys. We got uh, a lot of cars to see. Enjoy. I just wanted to point out the rocket. Yes, beautiful. We got a couple of shots of that. Great stuff. Thank you, guys. Good to see you. Okay. Poor guy. Oh, a little bit of roadkill going on there.
I had one of these in my early days. <laughs> Road Runner. Very nice. Screamer. Yeah, this is always one of my favorite cars. It's a great, it's a, great for, design. For me, it was a stupid car at 18. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, what car isn't stupid at 18? Well, all of them. <laughs> yeah. But this was especially stupid because uh, it, was, uh, it was a rocket. Yeah. And I think we, uh, oh, we have uh, this one over here. This belongs to a friend of mine who is a, uh, a magician at the Magic Castle, which I don't know if it's going on right now, but this is Mel's car, and, and uh, this is also a replica, but it's quite beautifully done. Drives it everywhere, he's walking around today. I think that's most of the cars, Michael. That is most of the cars, and you gotta get ready for the... Um, How much time do I got here? Your little uh, personal live. Yeah. So, uh, uh, at... Uh, at 10 o'clock our time, uh, it's going to be 18 o'clock in the UK. I don't know what that is. Yeah, but us um, in the sun so we can get some light in the yeah. face. So we're going to go live from, uh, if you guys are done here, uh, you can come join us at uh, on Instagram at Superfly Autos. And we're going to be releasing the uh, Diecast Heroes magazine, which I'm very stoked about. Big thanks to the, the Peterson Museum for putting all this stuff on. Uh, thanks to my partner in crime here john so yeah, hanging out Norvegian. from from norvegia <laughs> yeah. where in Nor where in norway eidsvall a uh, little outside of oslo don't ask me to spell that okay. yeah, that's, <laughs> that's not going to happen although the food is incredible year. oh yeah yeah and the people are incredible -er. we are yeah fantastic <laughs> and once again uh, on behalf of custom mics who's behind the camera shooting all this amazing stuff yeah. he's right there here i am yeah super cool <laughs> yeah. uh be sure to uh uh you know to come to uh, hang out with us on uh, all of Mike's areas and uh, Facebook and, and Instagram and everything else. I'm uh, Fireball Tim Lawrence on Facebook. And uh, we're going to see you guys soon. Uh, we're going to be hanging out at the Malamut Museum tomorrow. Yeah. Doing that live. That's going to be, be exciting day. So. Yep. And we will have Pep Williams, photographer. We're also bringing in Tony Dow. If you remember Tony from, from Leave it to Beaver. Beaver. He played Wally. Yep. He's, yep. he's going to hang out with us also. That's right. That's That'd right. That'll be really exciting too. We will see you tomorrow. Thanks yeah. for watching. Thank you, Peterson. Thank you. I didn't say thank you, Peterson. Yeah. Again, thank you, Pe Peterson, and, and all those involved, and all the people up front, all the food and all the stuff that they yeah. provide. Yep. Yeah, Amazing show. Really Beautiful. fun. Really fun. Appreciate you all. Thanks for having the custom mics. Thank you, Fireball. See you. Guys. Thank you. See ya.